serial update 1.4 has just been released and in this update we got a new script called the Verilux Hypermetric Stretch. That is basically a one-click tool that allows you to get mathematically perfect stretches every time. At least that's what people are saying. It's like all the boss in the astronomy community right now. So we're going to take a look at it and uh, see what the fuss is all about. The script is normally located on the scripts, Python, Processing, and you have it there. Verilux Hypermetric Stretch. Now, if you don't see it, that's because you need to go into Get Scripts. On the scripts here, you can just search for Vera, and then it's right there. Verilux Hypermetric Stretch, and you click Select, and then you click Apply. Once you've done that, you should now have access to it on the scripts, Python, Processing, and there it is. Now, before we go and play with it, let's just get some sample data up and running. Now, before you use this script, you need to do all the normal processing that you would do before you do your stretching otherwise, because it's not going to do that for you. So you can see here we have a rather large gradient in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go and run this through Graxpert and just get some, uh, some background extraction in here. I'm going to get some denoise in on it. And I'm also just going to quickly do a plate solve and a color calibration. Okay, now we can go and play with a new script. So we're going to go and launch it. Now, in here you get a number of options. You can see here the label 0, 1, 2, 3. The first thing is the processing mode. You can either go with an aesthetic or a scientific mode. The scientific mode is obviously going to try to do it as scientifically accurate as possible. Whereas the ready to use tries to make an as aesthetically pleasing image as possible. Um, in our case, I want to make a pretty picture, so we're going to go with aesthetic. In terms of sensor profile, if you are shooting with a one-shot color, then you pick your sensor over here. Now, if your sensor is not on the list or if you're shooting mono, I recommend you just keep the direct 709 profile here. Next, we can set our target background. I think the default is 20%. If we go to a live preview, we can see what the stretch image is going to look like. It's going to look like that. But we can also just auto-calc the log D. That's basically auto-calculating the strength of the stretching. Now, if we do so, we can see here it gets quite red. Now, there's a few things I want to change. First of all, I prefer to have my background a little darker. And what it's doing when you auto-calculate it is it's just trying to get as much color and as much like vividness out of the picture as it can. I think it's doing a little much here for my liking, so I'm going to pull this back a little bit so we get slightly more muted. But overall, all you now do once you are happy with where that is, you just click on process. And look at that there in the background, it has now processed and stretched your image. Look at that, we're still in linear. And if we zoom in here, because this is the reason why I picked the galaxy here is look at that. You can still see the center there is still distinctly different from the rest of the core around it. That's a very, very common issue when people are doing manual stretches of a galaxy is that they end up completely blowing out the core, um, which it hasn't done. It's actually done a really good job. We can definitely still see there is a gradient in here around the center. So it hasn't blown out the core. It's done a pretty good job. From this point on, we can now just begin to continue to our normal um, a normal like color work on it if you want to play around with colors and stuff like that. We could do that now if you wanted to. But overall, that's how simple this script is. But I want to try to throw something else at it and see what it will do with that. So let's go and try it with another data set. I just have some data on the heart nebula and we're just going to do a standard SHO Hubble palette on this. There we go. Just quickly check because I think these channels are not aligned. No, they're not. Look at that. Stars are all wonky. So I'll just select that and quickly align those stars up. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And I'm just going to run the exact same process on this now as I did before. We're going to run some, uh, um, some background extraction, some denoising, some color calibration. Okay, what I've done now, and don't worry, this looks terrible, I know, but that's just the auto stretch that messes up here in, in serial. Um, is I run the normal by processing on it without stretching, obviously, 
And I've also, as you can see, run a um, star removal because I want to try to see what it can do if I remove the stars. I have a feeling it's going to do an excellent job of that. But I also want to try something else that's quite fun. I've saved this image here because what I want to try is I want to see how good a result it can do versus if I do a manual stretch. So first, we're going to now go and run this script again. And then I'm going to try to stretch it manually and we're going to see who gets the best result. I think in the first time around, I didn't mention this block down here. And that's kind of on purpose um, because uh, Ricardo, who developed the script here, he put it in because some people like to go and pull back on the chromatic uh, preservation. But he also said, please don't do it because it basically just means the script doesn't do what it was designed to do. So he put it in because people are really asking for it. But also it's really recommended by the guy who made it that you just keep these settings as they are and don't change them. Um, so that's why I didn't mention that the first time around. Okay, let's go for a quick live preview and uh, auto calc. Oof, that's very strong. Okay, there we have the Verilux stretched image. Um, we're gonna come back to this in a second, but now we're just gonna jump. Whoa, not that much back. Whoa, what's going on? <laughs> what are you doing, Astro? Let's try that again. Okay, we're gonna undo the um, we're gonna undo the stretch here, and now I am going to just run and do my usual stretching here. All right, let's pull up these two images side by side so we can do a comparison. What we have over here, the slightly more vibrant one. And we have the Verilux automatic stretch. And over here, we have my manual stretch. So we can already just at a glance here, we can see that the manual stretch here is not as vibrant. I could maybe do something with that, but I just want to pixel peep a little bit just to see. So I'm not sure how well this shows up here on YouTube, but you can see in this area underneath this arm or whatever that is, that it definitely got more details, right? You can see here, you can more easily distinguish those structures here just below it compared to what we see over in my manual stretch. Again, also here, these are definitely more defined and better stretched over here. I wanna see down here in the fish because that's usually an area that's very hard in the heart nebula. <laughs> very difficult with the heart nebula to get right. So you can see here, usually what people do is they end up completely blowing out this area. And especially this area out here can be difficult. And once again, you can see that in here, I have no light in that blob there. It definitely got more like distinct features in there. Just for fun, I just want to completely finish processing this image so you can see what it looks like in its, uh, in its final form. Here we have the final image. Um, after a bit of color tweaking, um, just so I get colors more in line with what I want, what I like to do with these kind of Hubble stacks. Um, this is what I got. And I actually think it's a pretty decent result. Actually, I'm quite happy with this result. It looks awesome, I think. I, overall, I think this tool is amazing. I We saw that it could give a better stretch than what I could do on my own, even if I was trying to be careful because I wanted to try and make a good, uh, good stretch for the video. So I weren't going to be too aggressive it still gave a very, very, very good result. So I'm very impressed with it. And it gives a very solid base that you can work if you want to do your final color tweaking so you get the image just the way you want it to. I have a few things I want to ask you guys. First of all, um, go play with this yourself. Just try it, take some of your old data, reprocess it with this new script, and then come over by the community Discord server where we have a channel where you can just post your images. Show us like your own stretch versus what the Verilux could do. And then finally, of course, if you want to support this channel, there is a number of ways you can do it. First of all, deepspacebooks.com. There you can get my book, which is stuck. There we go. The Cosmic Field Guide. It's on deepspacebooks.com. You can also get t-shirts like this one here. If you want to show off that you're a real astronaut, you can get that over there. Um, so check that out, deepspacebooks.com. And you can also just go ahead and like the video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you want. That helps me a ton as well. So first of all, we have the stretch factor. That's kind of working a bit like moving that midpoint as we did before. You can see it behaves in a similar, it turns the red a little bit more yellow. I mean, I get a more of an orangey color 